Bleh. Boy, I am really falling behind this year. I better catch up before it becomes October 31st. Then I'm going to be in big trouble. This movie is called A Comedy of Horrors, Volume 1. It came out in 2021, and it's an anthology. If you know anything about me, you know how much I love anthology horror. It's my favorite thing in the world. Why? Because there's an instant reset, sometimes three times, sometimes four times, sometimes five times. We have a wraparound story. It's a lot of fun, man. You just you can't go wrong. I hadn't heard anything about this one. I was just perusing on Amazon Prime, getting a little fatigued from Shudder and wanting to venture out into what other streaming sites have to offer before we dive into some of our hard copy stuff, our uh, physical media cachet that needs to be explored. This one's tremendous. I don't know what else to say about it. It just, it's really funny. The tone, it's funnier than it is scary. It's not really that scary, but the stories are great. I cannot recommend this enough to anybody who's looking for a good anthology movie. You know, you're always on the hunt for something new. The first one is about clowns. There's a murderer on the loose in a town full of clowns, and that's it. That's literally it. It's like a police procedural, but everybody is dressed up like clowns. The clown makeup is never explained. It's just amazing. It's just taken very seriously, but not seriously at all, if that makes any sense. And they're trying to figure out who the, the murderer is, and it turns out to be someone who is a normie or an abnormal abnormie. I don't remember what they say at the end of the thing, but the idea is, you know, they, they find out who the killer is. There's a killer. And instead of it being a killer clown, it's a killer person, just a person. You know, remember that CGI movie? I think DreamWorks put it out. It was like Area 51 where the astronaut was the alien and it was on a planet full of whatever aliens, terrestrials, I guess they would be terrestrials, sort of inversing the idea of like humans being the scary aliens. And that's kind of like doing the same thing with clowns. To be a clown is to be normal and to be a human without any makeup is not. And at the end, they kill the killer and then they put clown makeup on his face and <laughs> and they're like anybody could be a killer you know it's just it's just kind of funny the second story which you got a killer muppet and this guy who you know child star who had like who has a muppet that's sentient it seemed like it was building on the brilliant tales from the crypt episode with don rickles where his the twist being spoilers if you haven't seen a 30 year old show his hand puppet or the ventriloquist doll is actually a disguise for his deformed fraternal twin brother who's murderous and rageful because he doesn't have all his working parts, if you know what I mean, and basically is half of the act and he has to chop off. He chops off. The, it's it's similar to that. And um, you could tell that they, they took from that, but in a good way. The puppet's voice is very funny and there's a few chuckles. It gets a little Evil Dead-ish, you know, where they're fighting the puppet. There's a lot of like duty, poopy, pee-pee, wee-wee toilet humor in these stories, which is great. I'm all for that lowbrow sensibility. It's it's so my bread and butter personally. So I, I go there and they definitely, they lean on that in several of these stories and that's fine. You know, the puppets biting the dude's wee wee off, wiener off. <laughs> Why am I talking like a kindergartner? And it's great, man. It's just, it's a trip. It's a real trip. And, um, and he's got like broken glass teeth. And then in the third story, which I think is my personal favorite, I'm watching it and going, oh my God, A, I wish I came up with the story because it's so brilliant. B, I want the feature length version of this because my favorite stories involve simple conflict between people, relationship conflict. And when you put a bunch of people in a room in a bad situation, how they react to that bad situation, it's great. And, you know, the problem with this story in particular, it suffers from Simpsons Treehouse of Horror-itis. And you know what I mean by that? Where they have to truncate the stories because they're trying to cram three stories into 22 minutes. And they like cut out whole swaths of what probably would occur in the story because they have to get to the next beat of the story. And they do that in this one. There's a bridal shower and the maid of honor unalives herself and records a video. She basically sets up, it's almost like a Saw-esque sort of scenario, but without like any mechanical puppets or anything. She leaves them an iPhone video stating, hey, I hate you bride to be because you're so self-absorbed when I, my life was ruined this whole year and you were just worried, you didn't want me to ruin your big day and you were really selfish. So I've poisoned you all with a neurotoxin and your margaritas and here's a bunch of weapons and there's only two antidotes and the bride can pick 
who obviously the bride would probably get one and she'll pick whoever else she wants. And so everybody's competing to be the one that the bride selects, kind of like a reversal of the throwing of the bouquet of flowers to determine who's going to get married next. It's great. It was my favorite. It was absolutely my favorite. It very much reminded me of Sissy, which was our second film this year. You know, instead of a hen's party in Australia, it's a bachelorette weekend, right? That's what a hen's party essentially is. I guess you could almost kind of play this short before... Sissy, and it would work great, not as a double feature, but as like a programming block or whatever. You know, twist reveal, the maid of honor never actually unalived herself. There was no poison. She just wanted to expose and bring to the surface what was already inherent inside of these people. A great lesson to be learned by all. Again, you could strip the story mechanics off of that story and put that into any other scenario. You could do it in like a workplace scenario. We have that movie Severance, and there was that other one with Demi Moore that was very recently I got to share an elevator with Demi Moore didn't even know it was her I was shocked shocking it's just one of those frameworks kind of like Night of Living Dead you can plug Night of Living Dead into anywhere and it works and yeah I just can't say enough good things about it the last story is also super duper unique and shout out to the dude I think who wrote and directed it I guess so he did something for VHS 2 he also does the writer's blockbuster podcast I saw this on the IMDB Jamie Nash and I was shocked because he's a friend of my good friend Bob Rose, who is on this channel all the time, thundergrunt.com. They do the writer's blockbuster. It's just a great, great podcast. Everybody go check it out. He had the last story, another tremendous story idea. It's a uh, lampooning Hollywood. You know, the guy's name is Cooper Bradley instead of Bradley Cooper. And he's got this great assistant who you think is like, they set up the assistant. Who's this like, this girl, I forget her name. They set up the assistant that she's going to be like the one that, that she's going to get it in some terrible way. And she ends up being like, like expectations are subverted and she ends up being like the badass, you know, sidekick, I guess, for the bumbling hero, the Cooper Bradley guy. He's the bumbling hero, right? And she is the, uh, it's kind of like Hong Kong Fooey, right? Like the cat does all the work and Hong Kong, he doesn't really do it. Is that, can you, can I say that now? Is that okay? Is that cartoon archaic and uh, problematic? I don't know. Yeah, but basically they go to like a, I guess like a special effects house. He has to get a mold done. They're doing a superhero and it's a Jewish superhero, which I like a lot because you know who I am, a Jew. The Silver Striker or something like that. This prop guy, the special effects guy, he goes through all the different body parts that he's molded. He's Sylvester Stallone's bicep, Jackie Chan's hands, Milton Berle's very, very long dick, and Meryl Streep's ass from Sophie's Choice. Turns out that he's a voodoo practitioner. Again, another story that absolutely could be pulled out into a feature. Like, I want to see the feature-length version of that story. I would want the tone to be a little bit more, like, serious in its horror and a little bit more grisly and stuff. This one is super fluffy, super light, super fun, which is fine. But like I said, if you're going to do the feature-length version, make it a little bit more, like, if it's Evil Dead, because it's, again, all these things are kind of playing on Evil Dead a little bit in terms of, like, the comedy horror aspect of everything. I guess maybe I would want it, this, the, the feature-length version of this last story would be splitting the difference between the original Evil Dead Dead and Evil Dead 2, Dead by Dawn, if that makes any sense tone-wise. It's called Good Head, and they, they take a molding of this guy's head, the, the special effects guy who does the voodoo on all the body parts. It's like a body part museum. I'm not doing a very good job of describing this. It's just a lot of fun, man. It's a lot of fun. Yes, he does get head from the head, of course, because in the same vein as Stuart Gordon's reanimator, Stuart Gordon Brian using his reanimator, you either must get head from the head, or the head needs to give head. You know what I mean? However which way you want to scratch it. And then the rap around I connected least with the wraparound but the wraparound was still fun because you know it's a witch who's moonlighting as like a kindergarten teacher reading these stories which kind of reminded me of Debbie Harry in Tales from the Dark Side the movie which is technically really the third creep show film so much fun in that kind of way she's like terrifying the kids but the reason why it didn't land for me is because there's no resolution. She just turns into a witch at the end. I kind of felt like we needed that little button, just one more button just to like sort of cap it all off. You know, hands down, I give this whole anthology five out of five stars. I really do. I, everything, when you put all of these parts, some stronger than others, when you put them all together they make something that's unimpeachable, in my opinion. It just, it's so fun. It's so, so fun. And it said volume one, I really hope there is a volume two. And it looks like it was made on a relatively micro budget or, you know, a small budget, a, a, a modest budget, um, which leads me to think, you know, or hope at least that, you know, they're capable of cobbling together a couple more shekels to do volume two. I would love to see it. 
truly. Um, we'll be back with another review very soon. Bye bye. <laughs>